Okay, this is lesson 1.4, angle measure. Uh, this is the first of two lessons dealing with angles. Um, and you can see here, uh, common usage of angles would be construction with the trusses. You see a lot of angles in there. A lot of times these are pre prefabricated, so they're already created. But some engineer, somebody at that factory has to put these trusses together or to make the design for them so that they are... Um, working. Uh, yeah, and those people probably get paid pretty good money to do that as well. All right, um, this is supposed to be kind of a connection here. You see over here, I wanted you to name these. I think I'm just going to kind of tell you what they are. If you look at this, and then I'm looking at this little tiny little section here, I'm trying to make a connection with what you see in this picture. And this is a little tough one to get. This right here is a guy that's really hot. What does that have to do with this picture? This is a degree. Okay, that's how we measure circles, and that is also how we measure angles. Okay, there's 360 degrees in the circle. We're going to be dealing with angles that are between 0 and 180 degrees. All right, here you have a picture. Here is your indicator, your little clue right over here to match with that. This is supposed to be the sun and where those extending out from the sun, they're sun rays. So this is a ray. It has an end point and the line extends forever and ever in one direction. Okay, it'd like be a piece of string that has an end point and the other end goes on forever and ever. This is a little weird. The book goes into this. It's kind of like we never use it again. This is what you would call a line. However, you look at Elmo here, here, he's got up and down. Up and downs are opposites. So these are supposed to be opposite rays. Like there's some imaginary point in here. There's a ray going one direction. There's a ray going another direction. And that forms your line. I, from here on out, you will still call that a line. It's just this section of the book, they have a little bit of the opposite rays coming in there. OK, so let's look at an angle. We have all these different parts. Um, here is your angle right here. Okay, an angle is made up of two rays. Okay, and these are considered to be the sides. So this is a side right here. And here is your other side over here. And these are considered rays. They have an end point here, and the line extends down that way. It has an end point here, the line extends down this way. So when you have an angle, it is made up of sides. Um, the vertex, that's where the two sides come together. Right here, your vertex occurs at point B. Okay, you can see how this ray starts at point B and it continues onward. The other side, the other ray starts at point B. Okay, so the sides are rays and where they begin is considered to be your vertex. Um, it's not a good way to remember it, but this is kind of like a V. Granted, it's upside down right now, but if I turned it a certain way, it would form a V. Not the best way to remember that, but if it helps. Interior. If you had a guess where the interior is, hmm, this would be considered the interior of the angle. Okay. Interior. That means that everything else that's not co colored would be considered the exterior. So anything out here is considered the exterior of the angle. And of course, this ray would go on forever and ever. So you have the interior on the inside, and the exterior is on the outside of that. Oh, I know. I want to. I want to do one other thing. When we talk about labeling an angle, you have to have your vertex in the middle. So you're going to say angle. Let me do that in a different color here. You're going to have an angle, and you can go A, B, C. Okay? You could sometimes get away with calling it angle B. The problem with that is sometimes our pictures are way more complicated than this, so we have to be careful with that. You could also go angle the other way, C, B, A. Just be careful. B still has to be the center of those th three letters.
Okay, question here. Uh, name the vertex and the sides of each angle here. And I only have one angle to look at. So name the vertex. The vertex is point J. The sides, remember your sides are rays. So you have to write your answer as a ray. So the ray would be, you have to start with J. You cannot start with K because this is the end point. So you're going to have J and then the ray goes through K. That's one of the sides. The other side starts with J. You have to start with J. You can't start with M because this is the end point. It's like the sun. And then it rays out through M. So the vertex is point J and the sides are ray JK and ray JM. Name the angle in four different ways. So one way is angle M J K. Another is angle K J M. You could say angle J. In this case, you can get away with it. If there's many more lines and rays and angles, then you will not be able to get away with just angle J. And then they also marked that with an eight. So they said angle eight, which sometimes you're going to see a number represented in angle. Okay, quick review of a protractor. Um, this takes a little bit sometimes for me to line things up on the board. Here's the thing. I want you just to look at the protractor first. I can just move this somewhere else right now. I guess not. Um, this spot right here, oops, this spot is kind of our, there we go, uh, the starting point. That's what I'm going to call it, our starting point. Okay. That's the part we want to line up with the vertex. So the starting point of an angle is the vertex. So let, let me move this over here and notice how I'm getting that lined up. I want to point out that this is not the starting point. This is. You have to look and see what matches up with zero. Every protractor is a little bit different. Okay, This is your zero line. So make sure this vertex lines up with that, not down here. Okay, then you have to make zero go with one of the rays. So you're going to turn your protractor. It makes no sense to turn it here. It's not giving us the measurement. So I'm going to turn it around here. Touchy, touchy. Okay, now I look at my angle. I have starting with zero here. And if I look across, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60. So this is going to be a 60 degree angle. Okay, you could also. Um, you can move this protractor and measure it from the other angle, too. You could say, this is zero. Look at the other line. You have to start with zero and then go this way, 60. Does it make any sense to call it 120 degrees? No, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that's your reveal on how to use a protractor. Now, I'm not. you can draw these if you need. Most of you probably don't have a protractor at home. Let's be a little realistic. You probably, this should be a review idea. Just a quick review. Right angle would be 90 degrees. An acute angle is anything less than 90. Most of you guys write down less than 90. It has to be bigger than zero, though. Okay? has to be bigger than zero. And an obtuse angle is somewhere between 90 and 180. Okay, most of you guys would just say greater than 90. You know what you mean, and I let you get away with that in class, but technically it doesn't get any larger than 180. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. Just look at our examples here. Name all the angles that have B as a vertex. Okay, so here's your vertex B. We have lots of angles. I'm only going to name them in one way. We got angle G, B, A. Okay, you could say angle 5. We can say angle 6, or you can say something like angle F, B, D. Okay, I'm just going to point out F, B, D. Or you can say angle 6. That would also account for that. And then you can say angle 7. Okay, I could write that. Or, in this case, I'm going to write angle D, B, A. Example number two, name all the sides of angle five. Name the sides of angle five. I'm going to highlight angle five right here. Okay. Remember, 
remember the sides are rays. So you do not write down your answer as a line or a segment. If it's a ray for angle 5, 1 starts with B and ends with G. Don't put down 5G. B is the end point. And then your other one, you actually have a choice. You can have B, E, or you can say B, F. Both of those are accurate. Those are the sides of angle 5. Example number 3, write a name for angle 6. Write a name, write another name for angle 6. Okay. There's more than one option with this. I'm just going to give you a couple that would work. I would say angle E, B, D. You could say angle D, B, F. Um, just, I just want to point out in both cases, B is your vertex. It has to be your vertex. Example number four, which angle has point X as a vertex? So here's point X. Let's check. <laughs> here's the thing about this one. If you guys are really savvy, you could probably look over here, never look at the picture, and be able to tell me what the answer is. Okay? Huh. And actually, I'm going to challenge you to do that. Which one of those has X as a vertex? You can do it just by looking at this and never even at this picture. And if you guess this one, then you know why. It's because it's the only one that has X in the middle. RAB, uh-oh, that doesn't have X as a vertex. It's not in the middle. This one has A as a vertex. This one has A as a vertex. This has B as a vertex. This is the only one that has X as a vertex. Example number five. Which ray is a side of angle 3? So let me highlight angle 3. Okay, which ray? So I have, it says RA. Well, R starts back here. I'm going to I don't like that one because that one does not have an endpoint at the vertex. XN, ray XN, it starts here. And it goes through this. So that looks to be pretty good. Let me just check AY. AY is over here. I also don't like that one. That one doesn't have any to do, anything to do with angle 3. So we're looking at answer B. Ray XN. Example number 6. Which of the following is the same as angle 3? All right, so look at angle RXB. Here's R. Here's X, here's B. Is that the same as angle 3 right here? No. Okay, so we're going to have to take that one off. Now let's try angle Y, B, X. Here's Y, here's B, here's X. So this, this angle right here, is that the same as angle 3? I bet you guys are all like, no, Mrs. Tally, it is not the same angle. C is angle N, X, A. So here's N. Here's X, here's A. That looks very promising. I think I'm going to go with that one, but I'm just going to double check Y, A, X. So here's Y, here's A, here's X. That would be this angle right here. So that is not going to be an answer. So I'm going to go with C. All right, that ends today's lesson over 1.4, day one.